I told my students I'm going to speak here today. They asked, is it like the TED talk that you showed us on global warming on YouTube the other day? I said, yeah, quite similar. The entire class goes silent. One student stands and says, sir, but those were really important and smart people. What are you going to say there? I was embarrassed and I laughed. But the class of the Sunday school that I founded to bring school dropouts back under the fold of education was wondering, what is our sir even going to speak there? And how will it make, even, how will ma how will it make any impact there? That made me think. Ladies and gentlemen, judges, and dear friends, I'm Darpan Pawar. I'm still a college student. And today I'm going to speak only solutions. Solutions that the youth can implement from today. I often wonder why it is so difficult for all of us to agree upon collective solutions. Solutions to problems that we all face at a global level. We today are speaking about G20. What is G20? G20, or uh, United Nations for that matter, are platforms wherein countries come together to formulate resolutions to uh, combat global crisis. However, we all know that these resolutions are like multilateral contracts, contracts which are not legally binding. And what happens to a contract which is not legally binding? It is not followed. This is what happens. G20 has uh, countlessly agreed on things like, oh, let us agree on keeping global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. But then we have seen that countries don't follow it. Now let us look at an alternative system, a system that the European Union follows. It is called the pooled sovereignty. What is the pooled sovereignty? Pooled sovereignty is when sovereign states come together, they pool their sovereignty and decide to make policies and resolutions which are binding on their members collectively on certain areas. And then, like, say, uh, just imagine G20 is able to formulate policies on areas like uh, water, sanitation, uh, migration crisis, and lately climate change has become fashionable on that. And policy areas like taxation and defense is where they can retain their sovereignty. And these countries have not given their entire sovereignty. Imagine this happening. Imagine two-thirds of the world's population, that is G20, doing it. Wouldn't the world be a better place? Now I see wonder on all of your faces. This boy started saying I'm only going to speak about solutions that are doable and the youth can start from today. But this boy here is speaking about huge aspirations which we are really unable to understand. How can G20 become pooled sovereignty? Oh, we are fighting with each other. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in missions. I do not believe in temporary solutions. We have to achieve such missions. Only then we can truly achieve uh, solutions to global crisis, how this can happen. This can only happen if the youth starts advocating. The youth has to advocate, A, for the right identity. What do I mean by the right identity? First, we'll have to let go of the, uh, you know, the outdated nationalistic identity, free ourselves, take on a global identity. Only with a global identity can uh, our minds and intellect function for everyone's well-being. How will this happen? This will only happen if the vo youth votes in policy makers who do not fool us with their nationalistic jingoism. It will only happen if the youth demands for policies that keep mankind and humanity before nationality. You, you get the chain? Only with a global identity, there will be a path that, we, that would be paid for the acceptance for a pooled sovereignty. And pooled sovereignty through collaboration, through liability, through penalties, we can make countries follow resolution. This is the chain. As capable youth, I want to tell you all that ask not what the society can do for you. Ask what you can do for the society. See, we have huge, large, global problems, and they are very large scale. But if we all contribute, we can bring the scale down. I decided to bring school dropouts back under the fold of education. My question to you all is, how are you planning to contribute? Lastly, I stand for a global identity because I do not want the next generation to suffer with the wars and strife that we have currently heaped upon each other because of our you know, inward identities. I want resources not to be wasted on maintaining armies and borders and waging wars. I want resources to be used for the development of mankind. My friends, let us join hands to make Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam a reality. Thank you.